Today, I'm going to discuss propulsion systems of aircraft. There are two main systems, piston props and turbojets. The rest are essentially just modifications of these. I'm going to start by looking at piston props. Piston engines work in four strokes. In the first stroke, the piston moves down, bringing oxygen from the atmosphere and fuel into the cylinder. In the next stroke, the fuel-air mixture is compressed by the piston. The third stroke is where the mixture is ignited via a spark plug, forcing the piston down, providing power to the crankshaft. For this reason, it is often called the power stroke. In the last stroke, the piston moves back up, forcing the exhaust gases out. This cycle then begins again as the piston moves back down, bringing in more fuel and oxygen. As you may have noticed, this is the exact same process a car engine goes through. In fact, the only real difference between an aircraft piston prop and a car engine is that the aircraft uses a more powerful fuel. Piston props always have multiple cylinders to maintain smooth power production, but the arrangement of these cylinders varies. Sometimes, they are lined up in a row or placed in a V pattern, like on cars. The cylinders might also be placed horizontally on their side. Perhaps the most common configuration, though, is the radial engine, where the cylinders are placed in a circle surrounding the crankshaft. A variation on this is the rotary engine, where the cylinders are still placed in a circle, but now the entire engine, cylinders and all, rotates, rather than just the crankshaft. In all of these cylinder orientations, the crankshaft is still connected to a propeller, which really just works like a bunch of wings rotating in a circle, producing thrust. While certainly the oldest of aircraft engines, piston props are still quite useful. They are only really used on small, low-flying, relatively slow aircraft, but at these low altitudes and air speeds, they are far more efficient than any turbojet. Now we move on to the turbojet which functions a bit differently. There are effectively three parts of a turbojet. The compressor, the burner, and the turbine. The compressor sucks air into the engine using a series of discs with many small blades on them. This air is then brought to the burner, where it is mixed with fuel and burned. This adds energy to the air, causing it to expand. This energy-rich air then passes through the turbines, which is another set of bladed discs. These discs extract some of the energy from the air to drive the compressor. The rest of the air rushes out the back end of the turbojet, producing thrust. A lot of times, stators are added in the compressor stage. These are just bladed discs, similar to the compressor discs except they are fixed to the engine, and thus don't rotate. These stators prevent air from forming vortices in the engine. Furthermore, the turbines also often drive a generator, producing electricity. Lastly, sometimes afterburners are added to a turbojet. These are placed after the turbines and inject fuel into the exhaust gases, which is then promptly burned. This creates a lot of thrust, but is very fuel inefficient. Turbojets, while forming the base of many other types of engines, are actually not used as is all that often. They produce a lot of thrust, but aren't as efficient as some other variations. As such, they are primarily used in military aircraft, where high thrust is necessary. Unlike piston props, Turbojets function best at higher altitudes and higher speeds. One of the common variations of the turbojet is the turboprop. This functions in the same way, except now the turbines are also connected to a propeller through a gearbox. Since the turbines extract more energy from the exhaust gases to drive the propeller, those gases don't produce as much thrust as in the turbojet. Rather, the main source of thrust is the propeller. 
However, the turbines rotate at a much higher speed than the propeller is designed for. So the gearbox is used to step down the rotation rate. Turboprops are most efficient at lower air speeds and altitudes, and thus often serve as a high power replacement for piston props on smaller airplanes. There are a few notable exceptions to this though, such as on the C-130. Nevertheless, due to the similarities between the two engines, the equations used to model piston props, which I won't go into here, are also used with turboprops. There is a fairly common variation on the turboprop, known as the turbo shaft. The only real difference is that instead of the engine power going directly to a propeller, it is directed onto a shaft, which then powers something else. Turbo shafts are most often used with helicopters, in which case the shaft is directed upwards to power the rotor. Next we have turbofans, which in some respects are just another form of turboprop. Both are based on the turbojet, but instead of a propeller, turbofans use ducted fans. The fan is still powered by the turbines, which again extract more energy from the exhaust gases, lowering the thrust from these gases. The thrust is made up for by the fans, which are large bladed discs, similar to the compressor discs, just bigger. By being larger, the fans blow some of the air around the engines, instead of just into the burner stage, like the compressor discs. This ratio of air passing around the engine to that going into it is known as the bypass ratio. The higher the bypass ratio, the more efficient the aircraft, and also the more it behaves like a turboprop. Since no air passes around a turbojet, turbojets can be considered as turbofans with a zero bypass ratio. Due to the similarities between turbojets and turbofans, the equations modeling turbojets, which I also won't go into, are also used with turbofans. Turbofans, especially high bypass ones, are the most efficient type of aircraft engine. They function well at rel a relatively large range of airspeeds and at intermediate altitudes. As such, they are the most common engine used in commercial airlines. The last type of engine I will focus on, which is only loosely based on the turbojet, is the ramjet, as well as the closer related scramjet. The ramjet is essentially a turbojet without the compressor or turbine stages. Rather, the ramjet just moves fast enough, like Mach 3 fast, so that air is forced into the combustion chamber by nature of the aircraft's speed. Once inside, the air slows down due to the pressure forces as the inside area of the engine increases. The slowed air can then be mixed with fuel and subsequently burned, being ejected out the back, producing thrust. A scramjet, which actually stands for supersonic combusting ramjet, follows nearly the exact same process. The only difference is that a scramjet doesn't slow down the air once it is forced inside. Rather, a scramjet mixes the fuel with the air and combusts it, all while the mixture is traveling at supersonic speeds. Note that ramjets and scramjets require the aircraft to be moving quite quickly to actually work. So, such aircraft have to use some other method to take off, such as a rocket-powered launch. Unfortunately, neither ramjets nor scramjets have seen much use. They have been primarily used in research operations. There are other types of engines, each of which I will only discuss briefly. The first of these is the electric motor. This uses electric power provided by a battery to create an oscillating current. This current runs in a loop between two magnets, which exert a moment on the current, forcing it to rotate. Just as the current aligns with the magnetic field, the polarization of the wire flips, 
causing the magnetic field to continue exerting a moment and repeating the process. This rotates a shaft, which then spins a propeller, creating thrust. Electric motors are very light, inexpensive, but aren't very powerful. As such, they are almost exclusively used in model aircraft. There is also the pulse jet, which is pretty much a cross between a turbojet and a piston prop. It burns fuel in the same way as a piston prop, in that it absorbs air, mixes it with fuel, and then ignites it, each in separate stages. However, instead of this combustion driving a piston connected to a shaft, the gases are ejected right out the back, like a turbojet. Due to the cyclic nature, thrust is produced in pulses, rather than continuously, like other engines. But, pulse jets do have few moving parts. Pulse jets have been used on only a few military aircraft. Options replacing the piston prop are the diesel engine, which ignites the gas by compression rather than via a spark plug, or the Wankel engine, which uses a rotating rounded triangle inside an elliptical opening. The spaces between one of the sides of the triangle and the side of the ellipse functions as the cylinder-piston combination in a piston prop. Lastly, sometimes aircraft use rocket engines, where an oxidizer instead of atmospheric air, and fuel are mixed and burned inside a combustion chamber. Nevertheless, hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something, and see ya.